India, the land that we call our own. Filled with youth who have opinions. And it is time that we started listening to them. Welcome to India at 75. Let us meet our speakers today, shall we? A wise man once said, Science is a gift to humanity. One should not distort it. Warm greetings to one and all. I am Advait Anand of Class 8 from PSBB Tinaga, Chennai. Science and technology have paved the way for development in various countries and so has it in India. Let us now entail in a journey and unravel the accomplishments of magnificent pioneers of science in our country. A noble story indeed. In the early 1990s, the liberalization policy helped revolutionize information technology and communication systems in our country. Who could be a better example than our ex-president Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam? In the wake of Cold War, several countries had reached great heights in the field of space technology. Abdul Kalam aided India get at par with these other countries. He was responsible for the development and execution of Agni and Prithvi missiles, India's first satellite launch vehicle, ballistic missiles and headed multiple nuclear tests. There is no doubt he was thus given the name Missile Man of India. Quite metaphorically too, he was definitely the backbone behind launching our country into becoming global leaders of the world just like one of his successful missiles. Homi Baba, an Indian scientist, won several accolades for his research and findings on quantum theory and cosmic radiation, which laid the foundation for this paradoxical concept. Thus, he is known as the father of Indian nuclear program. The precedent set by these eminent scientists was vital for our country to lead various other programs in space technology such as Mars orbital mission, Chandrayaan and Watch Victorious as well. Since independence, various academies and institutions have been established such as IITs, NITs, IISCs and ISAs in order to nurture the concepts of science and technology in young minds who will be the torch bearers of development in future. Scientists like C. V. Raman and Vikram Sarabhai have portrayed the importance of research and paper publications in the early years of independence. This culture of research is now growing in our country with various students from India beginning to unravel the intricacies of various scientific theories. In the past few years, we have seen various entrepreneurs in the field of tech dominating the global marketplace such as Sundar Pichai and Satya Nadella. Even university students are engaging in projects dealing with emerging technologies like blockchain, AI and VR thus paving the way for a more technologically sound India. A scientific mind kindles creativity. With the powerful weapon of technology, we as a community can catalyze this creativity into initiatives to boost the economic growth of our country. If we consistently keep up this momentum and keep encouraging science and technology, nothing can stop us from becoming global leaders very soon. Jai Hind! India, the secular country filled with undying potential, has a chance to touch the highest heights at every sector. Our faith on ourselves and our country makes the toughest of times memorable. The ever-significant Indian love story with a fantastic national sport, hockey, is worth celebrating. The true capability of us is portrayed by the sport. From getting approximately six consecutive gold medals in the Olympics to winning a bronze after 41 years should not put us down, but make us feel proud. After so many years, we won back our prestige. This doesn't show the downfall of hockey, but the powerful ability and determination of the Indian hockey team players. We achieve when we dream. From being regarded as the best hockey team in the world in 1936, to winning countless medals in the Olympic history, giving birth to legendary sportsmen and reviving the once lost glory, proposes many leaps in this field in the future. As per my perspective, if hockey as a sport is promoted, well-organized, profitably funded and deeply looked into, 
we have extremely bright chances to be undefeated in the path further. This issue that obstructs this is the lack of encouragement of this sport. Predominantly, most Indian schools have cricket, football, basketball and badminton. However, hockey is a sport occasionally heard of in this list. The unfortunate fact is that many people find it hard to accept hockey as a national sport. Why? Just because of the insufficient exposure to the sport. If educational institutions inculcate the sport and teach it appropriately, the youth, our future, would know and learn the sport, further pursuing it and persuading or motivating more people. Just a bit start and tons of determination leads to indefinite results. My insight on the whole sport future is India has a massive possibility to aspire several more goals and legends in hockey, only if we put a little effort to make it rise and fly high. I know we can do it. At last, we are the India. You are never a loser until you stop trying. 1928 Amsterdam Olympics marked the beginning of Indian hockey's magnificent run. The Indian men's hockey team, led by legendary Dhyan Chand, won their first Olympic gold medal. They repeated the feat at the 1932 Los Angeles Olympics and the 1936 Berlin Olympics to complete a memorable hat-trick and cement their status as the world's most dominant hockey team. Indian hockey reached a nadder at the 1976 Montreal Olympics, first time since 1924 that India was unable to win a single medal at the Olympics. But the legends regained some of their lost glory as they became Olympic champions at the 1980 Moscow Olympics, which remains their final Olympic hockey medal till date. Until 2021 Olympics, Tokyo, a bronze medal after 41 years. The best hockey team once, with numerous consecutive gold medals, came back to the podium after 41 years. I call it the greatest moment in the history of sports, as we, even after the dramatic downfall, never lost hope. India, my invincible India. Happy Independence Day to everybody. Signing off, Sri Chama. Agriculture means more than agriculture. It defines our cultural identity. It decides our existence. It fuels our economy. But most importantly, it is our connection with nature. My name is Kaidrun. I'm a seventh grader from the Choice School, Tiruvela. In 1943, our nation faced one of the worst famines in our history. Nearly three million people lost their lives in the Bengal famine. Since independence, our agriculture sector has grown four times in terms of average farm yield. Our nation has taken several bold social reforms, such as abolishing the zamindari system, putting ceilings on land holdings, reformed tenancy laws, and consolidated land holding. Jai Jawan, Jai Kisan, the famous slogan from our former Prime Minister, Lal Bahadur Shastri shows the importance of our agriculture sector along with our defense sector. We had a green revolution and a white revolution in the 60s. As we celebrate 75 years of independence, we must ask an important question. How can we bring our agriculture sector towards a sustainable future? We still have 60% of our population depending on our agriculture sector. The challenges ahead of us are tough and complex. We must tackle the risks associated with climate change. We must ensure our food security without compromising our food safety. We must evolve, innovate, and adopt new techniques into farming. We must bring our young generation into farming. We need to do more research and development, and we need to harness the possibilities through technology. 
I have a simple and radical solution to one of the major challenges that the agriculture sector is facing. My grandfather's farm faced a water shortage a few years ago. He spent thousands of rupees on digging bore wells, but he had no luck. Several farmers in our community are also facing a water crisis, be it a drought or a flood. Here is my solution. We must involve bigger corporations to invest in mega irrigation projects. They can come up with advanced water management systems to ensure and provide affordable irrigation solutions for our farmers. Let us invest in our agriculture sector. As the saying goes, once in your lifetime, you may need a doctor or a lawyer, but three times a day, you need a farmer. Thank you. Hello everyone. Well, the glorious India that you see today was not all that hunky-dory when it all started. India's democratic freedom was unique among the world's newly independent states. The nation has faced religious violence, casteism, naxalism, terrorism and regional separatist insurgencies. We were known to have the best of natural resources, minerals, etc. First the Mughals, then the British had plundered all of that. They left us with 16% literacy rate, no infrastructure, roads, power and deep-rooted poverty. We were called as the land of snake charmers and peasants. Today, India is the biggest democracy with the average age being 29, which means we are potentially the youthful, productive, dynamic, young population ready to work and transform the world. We are also known as the pharmacy of the world, supplying 60% of generic medicines and vaccines globally. And the most dominant service sector contributes to 55% of India's GDP, attracting significant foreign investments and providing large-scale employment with an expanding IT industry. India is considered a technological superpower and the world's office. As per the World Bank, the economy of India is growing at 9% on an average and is currently the world's fifth largest in terms of GDP. India's stock markets and rupee movement share a strong positive correlation. When the markets go up, rupee appreciates and vice versa. The FII holds 20% in Indian stock markets. We are a $3 trillion economy as of 2021. We aim to touch the $5 trillion economy by 2030, which also translates to becoming a global economic powerhouse, in turn, having a stable currency. According to me, simply put, the next 75 years, India has to reach the 95% literacy rate there has to be equal distribution of income between all strata of people. Skill and reskilling to be prioritized. Inclusive growth. Moral leaders and businessmen. Dependency on imports from other countries. By choosing Make in India products and moving towards manufacturing electric vehicles. It took us 75 years to reach where we are. We may just need half the time to become a global superpower, provided we do the right things in the right way. I also believe India should be a permanent member at the UNSC with the economic and military might by 2030, which can have huge influence like the other superpowers. Let the world hear it loud and clear. India is awake. We shall prevail and we shall overcome. Thank you. Let me quote and remind ourselves the legendary poet Kalidasa. Sarira madhyam kharo dharma sadhanam. Good health is essential for a happy and fruitful life. It's also a quote as health is wealth and prevention is better than cure. Ever since the discovery of the first vaccine against smallpox by Edward Jenner, humanity became aware of the various forms of microbes which enter our body and rot her work. During colonial rule, some preventive measures were taken, but they were adequate for a vast and diverse topography like India. After independence, 
स्मॉलपॉक्स पोलियो डिप्थेरिया कॉलरा मलेरिया एक्सेट्रा अज्यूम एपिडेमिक प्रोपोर्शन एंड कॉस्ट मिलियंस ऑफ डेथ्स एंड इन्फॉर्मिटीज बट विद अवर सिंसियर एफर्ट्स एंड स्ट्रॉन्ग इम्यूनाइजेशन ड्राइव वी वे सक्सेसफुल इन इराडिकेटिंग स्मॉल पॉक्स एंड पोलियो कंप्लीटली वैक्सीन अगेंस्ट टी बी खॉलरा मलेरिया फाइलेरिया एक्सेट्रा दो नॉट इराडिकेटेड कंप्लीटली आर कंट्रोल टू अ लार्ज एक्सटेंट ट्रिपल एंटीजन वैक्सीनेशन टू न्यू बॉर्न बेबीज हैज सेव मैनी प्रेशियस लाइफ ड्यू टू दीज स्टेप्स द लाइफ एक्सपेक्टेंसी विच स्टूड जस्ट थर्टी टू ईयर्स एट इंडिपेंडेंस इज सेवेंटी ईयर्स एट प्रेजेंट विच इज एट पार विद एनी डेवलप नेशन एज टाइम एडवांसिस न्यू फॉर्म्स ऑफ माइक्रोब्स इधर डेवलप माई नेचुरली और अलैब डिजाइन एच आई वी एच वन एन वन जीका इबोला जापानीज एंसेफेलाइटिस एक्सेट्रा इन्वेडेड वेरी क्विकली एज द वर्ल्ड इज गेटिंग ट्रांसफर इन टू अ ग्लोबल विलेज विद अवर स्ट्रॉन्ग इम्यूनाइजेशन ड्राइव इंडिया नॉट ओनली विच टू दट ऑन स्लॉट्स प्रॉदर बिन एबल टू सपोर्ट अदर्स इन द टाइम ऑफ नीड द प्रेजेंट कोविड नाइन्टीन वायरस विच ऑर्जिनेटेड इन वुहान इज अ मैटर ऑफ ग्लोबल कंसर्न द कोविड क्राइसिस हैज क्लियर लेसन्स for what we can do now to stop a future global health emergency unless we take necessary action another pandemic is inevitable in the coming years for future pandemics to be managed more effectively and efficiently we have to advance in biotechnology through further research we may soon have the capacity and capability to replace existing vaccines with antigens that are more efficacious safer and less expensive these vaccines with improved immunogenicity and stability will help in neutralization of immunization in the next 75 years india will produce recombinant dna vaccines that will contain rna of a virus hardly we have to advance in biotechnology through further research we may soon have the capacity and capability to replace existing vaccines with antigens that are more efficacious safer and less expensive these vaccines with improved immunogenicity and stability will help in neutralization of immunization in the next 75 years india will produce recombinant dna vaccines that will contain rna of a virus harmless to humans and once injected will produce large amounts of antigen that will stimulate our immune system the foundation of nanotechnology based pharmaceutical industry of india is capable to cope with unforeseen circumstances that may occur in the near future jai mahatma gandhi had once said the soul of india lives in its villages and after about 100 years the soul is where it was mightier and smarter than before hello everyone i am anjali menon from one such soul of india in kerala villages play an important role in indian life from the prehistoric times the village has been the unit of indian social structure india can be rightly called the country of villages according to the census of 2011 there are about 6 and a half lakh villages in india which are inhabited by 70% of the total population villages in the pre independence era were not all that great people were poor backward ignorant and superstitious they employed primitive methods of agriculture there were no schools banks and hospitals no electricity proper roads and tube wells villages were plagued with rigid caste systems and sufferings then came the much cherished independence in 1947 the indian government set about improving the villages the community development scheme and the successive fire plants laid emphasis on agriculture rural development and rural electrification primary schools for children night schools for adults and modern methods of agriculture fertilizer subsidy crop insurance free power etc have enhanced the quality and quantity of the yield electricity illuminated not just their huts but their entire lifestyle the 73rd amendment act of 1993 laid the foundation of a strong and vibrant panchayati raj government hospitals and dispensaries were set up health and sanitation were given immense importance road connectivity brought the villages closer to other parts of the nation 
slowly but steadily our villages became self sufficient units with healthy and fruitful interactions with towns yet retaining its simplicity serenity and calmness change is natural and the indian village is no exception it has come a long way in these past 75 years the standard of living of the rural population is going higher the indian village is no less than a town in many ways today rural tele density is about 59.5% operation blackboard has nurtured literacy and educated youth are competing at par with their urban counterparts akashwani and vivid bharati now share space with dtn channels and all india fm channels many of our urban cultural practices can be traced back to our agrarian backgrounds for example many of our new year festivals such as baisakhi in punjab bihu in assam and onam in kerala actually celebrate the main harvest season while writing about indian villages sir charles metcalfe once wrote the indian village seems to last where nothing else lasts dynasties tumble down revolution succeeds revolution all the masters change but the indian village community remains the same that more or less sums up india the land of villages new appreciation is also emerging in the urban folks and the faster the dignity of the village is instilled in the anonymity of the city the greater will be the rise of our beloved nation india so my dear countrymen let's be proud of our rural connect because rural is the way to go for india's future jai hind today i am here to present a speech on internet someone said that our world is small but the in advent of internet this seems realistic the internet brought the world together and the distance between two persons is really not a distance today we all know about the advancement technology that happening in our world one of the most attributes of the advancement technology is the internet the internet made available easy to many individuals and rapidly changed our travel work education and entertainment many of you are aware of what is the facility of internet is still i would like to highlight the aspects of the internet the internet is a facility which two guarded screens are connecting through signals thus through this medium the information can be exchanged easily to two gadgets there are many advantages of the internet and it has proved a milestone of the hu- development human kind two users are sitting in the two distant parts of the world can easily communicate with mails chats video conferencing by the internet it also provide all kinds of information to its users it also provide entertainment services such as watching movies listening to music and playing video games various day to day life activities such as banking facilities booking travel tickets and all the all such activities through the internet these are the some benefits of the internet but the internet has a dark side also a number of people are misusing the internet for fraud and illegal activities excessive use of internet in the wrong hands a number of cyber crimes are happening in our world so we have to take safety measures and precaution addiction to online games of are the most problem faced by the parents the children are addicting to online games and they avoiding their studies and outdoor activities so parents as teachers are monitoring the online activities of their children and guide them on the proper path of the internet we must aware and educate the online frauds and cyber crimes so i think you all understand what is the internet and the merits and demerits of the internet so i concluding my words thank you isolated people do not manifest among us they don't ask anything of us they live and die mostly without our knowledge India has grown by leaps and bounds in every sphere and i am sure you feel that by the 21st century there should be no mysteries left for us to explore but hold your breath 
There is an island that hasn't been touched by modern civilization for around 60,000 years. Can anyone remain hidden for centuries? Well, as the rest of the world seemingly moves into modern civilization, the Sentinelis are truly one of the lost and last tribes of the world to live as primitive humans did. The indigenous tribes of the Andaman Islands of India have refused all contact with the outside world. Using only stones and arrows, they have successfully repelled anyone who tries to get close to their island. Their language and exact population remain a mystery. They do not know what Bitcoin, global warming or Netflix are. Visitation to North Sentinel Island is heavily restricted by the Indian government and contact with the tribe who lives there is illegal because it's too dangerous. They are not immune to modern diseases and a simple flu could wipe them off. The Indian government was initially eager to make contact with the tribes. However, they concluded that the tribe is healthy and thriving without any intervention of modern civilization. A few checks made by the Indian Navy after the tsunami in 2004 confirmed this. What is the reason behind their aggression towards the outside world? Will the contact ever be made? Only time will tell. Civilized world has been interfering with indigenous tribes around the globe, changing their lifestyle for better or for worse. Losing them means losing a window into human history. These tribes can be an anthropologist's delight, but any human contact will ultimately lead to tragic consequences on both sides. It seems the present official policy of leaving the Sentinelis more or less alone is the best we can do for them. Take this as India's vision for the near future at least. Sometimes it is better not to know. <laughs>